So this might look like a little coffin or something, but it's not. This is a box I made so I can distress the copper backsplashes I'm gonna install in the kitchen. It's just plywood. I line the whole thing with peel and stick, and that's right, when you put in peel and stick, you gotta use a J roller to make sure that you get good solid adhesion. And in this case, it's more important than ever because we're gonna fill this box with water and not just water. It's gonna be a mixture of water, muriatic acid, and a lot of salt. It's gonna be highly corrosive. So this copper is really, really thin and I don't want it to bend when I pick it up. So I've still got it laying right on top of the template I cut so I'll set the whole thing in here and slide it up here and then I'll slide that copper off all the way up to the front and I can pull the template out the back. And this isn't just a template. This is actually the panel I'm going to install on the wall. It's got all the outlet cutouts in it and everything's perfect. I checked it to make sure. Once the copper's finished, I mean, the patina is all done. The shellac has been shot on it and the varnish has been shot on it. Then I'll put the adhesive on the actual panel here on the, on the substrate and I'll spread it with a notch trowel so it's real smooth and even and I'll adhere the copper right to that panel. So I got about three gallons of water in this five gallon bucket and the recipe that we found and actually works because we've used this before in the living room the recipe calls for an ounce of muriatic acid for every quart of water so we need 12 ounces of acid in here there we go and a little more just for good measure and then the recipe also calls for a tablespoon of salt for every quart of water. So we're just gonna salt to taste. Let's see what it tastes like, I'm kidding. So uh, that's probably enough salt. A little more. And then we'll mix it up real good. I already scuffed up the copper real good with 240 grit sandpaper and I've scratched it. I didn't just scuff it. And they say you're supposed to wash it with detergent too, but by sanding it like this, I've removed any kind of oil or film that might have been on here. And now we're all set to put some sawdust on it. Yeah, you got to have a really good supply of sawdust to pull this off. The sawdust we have found is what creates those big flakes of patina of corrosion, basically. I'll wet it down with the acid mix. put in the little backsplashes, a layer of those, and they're all scuffed up too. Another layer of sawdust. I'd wear a dust mask it's hard to talk into a microphone when you've got a mask on. Just four more small pieces to put in. switch to a little watering can so I can kind of get even dispersion of the solution over the 
all of the sawdust. I want to make sure all the sawdust is soaked really good because it's the solution mixed with the sawdust that's going to remain in contact with the copper. I mean, this thing might be flooded, but I don't think it's going to be underwater, really. It's just going to be saturated, the, cop the sawdust. And this is working really well. We'll wrap this up for Christmas. Well, I hope we can open it before Christmas. And this will stop that solution from drying out. Keep everything in there moist, ready for storage. I admit it, I cheated. I couldn't wait. I've been out here a few times actually looking at these. It's been a couple of weeks. I got really wrapped up with some other stuff and I kind of left all of these in here and you can see that some of them, look at this. Like this piece was buried in the sawdust way down deep. So it, I'm just gonna clean this off these edges so you can really get a look at this. Some of them that are down in there really deep only got a patina like right on this edge here. And the rest of this copper is discolored. I mean, it's, it's darkened and everything. It's no longer bright like orange, but it's not the green color I want. And I discovered, I've done this enough times, I should have learned this a long time ago, I discovered that what we're really after here is oxidization. And for oxidization, you need oxygen. And burying these things down deep in the sawdust isn't going to allow the patina to develop the way it ought to. It really needs to be out closer to the air. So I'm gonna slowly pick these pieces out like I did these and leave them with just a little bit of sawdust on top of them because the sawdust is saturated in the solution. And that, that kind of muriatic acid, salt and water solution will keep the tops of these kind of damp and we'll build up a really thick crust of patina on here with real flaking in it. And that's what I'm after. I want there to be real thick, like flakes of patina on here. And then I'll shellac all of these before I spray them with varnish and that'll protect the flaking from peeling off. I'll come in here tomorrow and see what color it is. And I'll make sure when I do, that I give you a peek at the same time. Here's the one that we were looking at yesterday. And just yesterday, in one day, remember, this thing had no green on it at all. And today, I'm looking for my little brush. Here it is. I don't want to disturb that patina. It's on there pretty good, but today, the coppers, even the copper that's left is kind of a nice color. And the flaking is starting to appear. You can see it right here. The flaking is starting to appear in here, but we need more of that patina in here. So I'm gonna leave this covered with sawdust for a couple more days. Well, here they are. And they look pretty good. They're kind of dull right now, kind of flat looking. But once I get some shellac on them and I start spraying them with the varnish, they'll pick up a little sheen and they'll look just perfect. I had to do a little bit of touch up here and there to a couple of these, but not too much. But this one especially, because it was buried at the bottom of the box and it got no oxygen to it. So when I opened it up, it was almost pure, like, like shiny copper. But it sure is nicer looking now. That's because I mixed up a small solution in the spray bottle and I sprayed that real good and saturated it. And then I took some of that wet sawdust and scattered it on top too. Because like I said before, it's the sawdust that creates that texture, that really deep kind of texture to the surface, that flaky look to the patina. Light sanding will take all the really like high spots and the little loose flakes off so that they won't come off later after you've finished it. The finish will still be really textured, but well, you probably can't even hear me. Let me pull this respirator off. 
Oh, there we go. Even though it's a little premature, I really like wearing a respirator when I'm doing this because this dust is just hugely toxic. I've, I've worn a regular dust mask and it still gets right through the mask. So I wear the respirator, otherwise it attacks my sinuses, it gets into my lungs and my throat. It's bad stuff. Remember, it's a mixture of copper and muriatic acid and salt and none of it's good for you. Here's one of the finished pieces. Take a look at that. Looks pretty cool. And I'm about to glue that up now and laminate it to the substrate. But before I do any of that, I've got to sand the inside and get all of this green kind of flaky stuff off the copper and scratch the copper up a little bit so that PL premium will adhere better. Perfect. So now all I have to do is clamp this thing down, put some pressure on it. I don't have to put a whole lot of pressure. The glue is incredibly tacky. I just want to push it down kind of flat and hold it there for several hours, probably overnight. So I'm going to take some little wooden shims here and set them in on top of these plywood blocks. And then I'll just set a clamp right on top of them. Gonna tighten that clamp up. Then I can just tap these shims in. And that'll put down enough pressure to squeeze that glue just a little bit. Here comes the fun part. I gotta chip it up inside here and clear these outlets. Oops, I broke that switch plate. That's easy to fix. Almost got it. There we go. And it's not like I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on this. Cut them short so I got room in here to put a plywood spacer too, which helps. It helps it slide down and grip a little better. Yeah, right in there. It's got enough pressure on it. You can hear it. Dung. Ooh, that's got good tone. So I know that's pretty snug in there and yeah. It's tight against the wall, so that's the only brace I'm going to need. So once these two set up, I'll pull them out. I'll run some silicone sealant along the backsplash and the countertop, and Bob's your uncle. All done. That finishes the backsplashes. I can move everything back in. And that finishes the kitchen. I got up early this morning. I pulled the last of the braces out. And I ran silicone sealant between the countertop and the backsplash, as well as between the backsplash and the wall. 
all the way around the kitchen. So everything is finally finished. And it looks pretty cool. Now all I gotta do is finish the wainscoting underneath that bar top. But I think that's gonna wait maybe another year. I mean, don't wanna rush into things.